Welcome back to the Artist Access. You just saw Chief Ikena. Yes. That was amazing. I want to hear a little more about this poem. There were so many layers to what you just performed. It's obvious that maybe you also have an acting background. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us more about the name. Tell us more about the poem. So the name of the poem is Eat Em Up. Um, so the idea of the poem, um, really the message of the poem is, um, of course, body positivity. Um, and pretty much the whole point of the poem is to, for me as an individual, to um, show and express myself um, about my body weight, right? Um, mm -hmm. I'm a big boy plus size, right? Um, in my whole life, I've been always told that, ah, uh, man, being big is not it, right? You need to stop eating. You lower your weight, right? Um, and that didn't really sit right with me. Um, granted, you know, I believe that you can be big and healthy, um, but for me, it was always an issue because I believe that you can be big, you can be healthy and mentally you can be big. Uh, and I feel like a lot of people not only made me feel insecure about mm. my weight, but made me feel insecure about who I was as yeah. a person. So the poem really emphasizes me and showing how I'm a big boy. I'm big. Like, it's just, it's just who I am, right? And I'm going to accept that, not just physically, but mentally, right? No matter what I'm going through, no matter what people say, I'm going to do what I gotta do and I'm gonna just eat them up. <laughs> what has been some of the responses and feedback from men that may be able to relate? I don't think it's very common mm -hmm. that men talk about body positivity in this way. Mm -hmm. uh, I would definitely say that it has definitely given such a great impact. Um, a lot of people really enjoy the poem. A lot of people, not just black men, just black women, uh, plus size people overall just enjoy this poem, mostly because it tackles something that a lot of people don't like to talk about or feel uncomfortable talking about mm -hmm. or don't feel like they have the voice to talk about, mm -hmm. right? And I, I, I'm a believer in becoming the voice for the voiceless, right? Tell a story, change a life. That's how I live my life. Um, and so to give that story and to have the opportunity to give, use my voice to talk to a lot of people and being like, yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you for telling my story. Yeah. It's, it's so impactful for me. You have a powerful presence, a powerful voice. Tell us a little more about what you have coming up. Where can people see you? Where can they listen to your poetry? Right. Um, so, um, a couple places. Uh, I definitely do poetry. I write about now. Um, that's definitely one of the main places. Um, I, myself, have actually created a space for poets, um, for artists, comedians, um, music artists, all kinds of artists. Um, it's going to be at the Houston Museum of African American Culture. Um, and the event is called the Art of Poetry Open Mic Event. And every third Thursday of the month, what we do is we feature two artists. And in that moment, we highlight some of the artists that are com that are in Houston, whether they're mm -hmm. coming up artists or the artists that have been in Houston for a long time, right? Yes. And we give them that space for us, by us, you know, to be who they want to. Or even if they're artists that are just like, hey, I have never featured anywhere. I would like to at least start somewhere, see how it feels to be a feature. That's your opportunity, you know? And I, be, I really enjoy the space because it's at a space where we have black art, yeah. you know, modern day black art, contemporary black art, um, and the museum itself is fantastic. Um, the Houston Museum of African American Culture is, it's like a second home to me, honestly. So if you haven't gone, you have to go, of yes. course. <laughs> and that's just amazing to hear that you are amplifying other artists. You are even, you know, having baby artists come yes. and have their first <laughs> performances. That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. We have a little more time. I'm curious about your story. How did you get into poetry itself? Um, so it, it's, it's a funny story. Um, I always tell people uh, I never really considered myself a poet. Hmm. I was considered myself a storyteller. Yeah. Um, and that was just because I'm an actor. Um, I do a lot of things as far as um, acting, entertaining. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm I'm huge on TikTok. I do TikTok things. I do videos, uh, skits, all that. And so when poetry came around, my um, older sister actually did poetry mm -hmm. for a long period of time, and she was like, "Hey, you got some poems? Do them." I'm like, 
ain't, I ain't really a poet <laughs> like that. You know, because to me, poetry was like, oh, um, the sky is blue. Uh huh. The sun the and sun the is sky. Red. And you the... love me, I love you. Yeah, and uh-huh. it just, I thought it was real cliche, you know, and I was like, uh, poetry is not my thing. Yeah. Um, and so when I entered into doing poems and I saw a different variety of poems, yes. you know, because there are different varieties of poems, mm-hmm. right? Poetry as a whole, spoken word, um, spoken words, um, slam. Yep. You got rappers, even poem, rhythm and poetry. Like, you know, when I learned and really did d- d- dive deep into research, it was really amazing to me how even me as a performer, can do poetry. Yes. And that's really what started me to do poetry and say, hey, you know what? Let me try. Mm-hmm. And that, actually, that poem was one of the first poems I have written but never performed until recently wow. because I did some editing on it. So now it's like, wow, this poem is something people want to hear. And so, so what changed? So what changed as far as like the poem? It was on paper. It was something that came out of you from your personal experience. Something happened to make you feel this is ready to share. What I will tell changed? you what changed. What changed or mm-hmm. what made me say this is a place for me to perform is mm-hmm. I feel like I wasn't getting my opportunity to tell my story. Um, I think that the idea of creating your own space yes. is very important. Mm-hmm. Uh, I. I was getting turned down to do a lot of things Hmm. for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. And I told myself, in order for me to put myself in that space, I have to create my own space. That's right. Which is why I decided to go out and perform, which is why I decided to create the art of poetry at the museum. Now, I'm giving other people that same opportunity that I wish I had when I first started. And I think that's what made me change and what made me say, hey, this don't belong on paper. This belongs on a microphone. This belongs on a speaker. This right. belongs on a screen. That's right. You know, and it's, it's that's really where it came from. We are so glad that you are performing, Thank you. that you are amplifying other people's voices, Thank you. and that you're creating spaces. You're not asking. You're just going out there and you're doing it. Yes. And that's what the artist access is all about. Um, we are about to. I think go into your second poem, if that's okay. Okay. Can we perform it right here? Sure. We have two more minutes sure. until commercial break. Sure, yeah. I can okay. definitely do it. I can definitely do it. Um, let's see. There's something about a black woman that words cannot put into terms and eyes cannot fathom because there's something about a black woman. Then when my black Rapunzel let down her hair and wake up natural, just a natural thing to do, as if God made a second nature for her skin to command the sun to rise, let her be the sunshine while the sun calls her his sunshine because there's something about a black woman that is speechless. Like, when God created a black woman, all he could say was, dang, and sent his only begotten daughter to hold the world on her shoulders, knowing that the world would truly never love her voice, her skin, nail her to the cross, claim her to be the angry black woman until three days later she rose up from the grave all fleek, from her head to her feet, never lost a beat and told the world that they can suck it, that they only scratch the surface of their angry black woman because there's something about a black woman that screams hallelujah, that every praise break becomes a Beyonce concert, that every period becomes a shout, that every Kurt Franklin song is modified like something about a black woman. Oh yes, something about a black woman. And that every run that's put out of Red Allen's spirit becomes the anthem for every man that stands in the presence of a black woman because there's something about a black woman that makes me know that my little sister will be okay in this world. That I am not her provider but her supporter and her skin is the true meaning of everlasting happiness because there's something about a black woman that makes me say, dang. I need a black woman. (laughs) (laughs) That was amazing. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for being here. And we're going to go to commercial break. So when we come back, we'll have another artist for you all.